So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, NetLogo GIS extension today, right? Um, and the basic, uh, the model I want to talk about is in the models library under the IBM textbook chapter eight, um, and it's called NetLogo ticket, or it's called ticket sales, right? Uh, and this was inspired by uh, the dissertation of Peggy Singh, who was a student at Maryland while I was there, and she was interested uh, working with her dissertation chair, Wendy Mo, on trying to understand how live event ticket sales affected each other. This model never quite got to the point of really kind of exploring that question in detail from an agent-based model. Uh, Peggy's uh, dissertation is much better about that, but it's not agent-based. Um, but it does examine, you know, it's kind of a first attempt at trying to get to that point, right? So in this model, um, you'll notice it takes a little while to actually set up and run. And that's because what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull in data about um, real geographical spaces. And this is data that was obtained uh, from uh, the federal government, the US federal government's um, census, uh, basically drawn from Tiger, which is their tool that provides free data about the census to uh, anyone who goes and logs in, right, essentially. Uh, now, some of the data you have to pay for and stuff like that, but most of it's free. So what I've done is I've pulled in a map of Manhattan with the census boundaries laid out on it. And then I've populated each of those census boundaries with um, an age, a representative agent for every household. Actually, I think, I think it's like one for every 10 households uh, that are in that particular census tract. Uh, and it's kind of interesting just what you see from this right away, right? For instance, there's no one living in Central Park, which runs right down the middle as you might expect, right? And then, what I also have is I have a, a venue that I've kind of located in the world. And uh, what this allows you to do is then explore how people decide whether or not they're going to go to this venue over that venue and using real demographic data about that particular age area. So in this case, right, um, all of these agents decide that it is worth their time and money to attend. And you can kind of understand how placing different venues might happen. And eventually what you'd love to do is be able to have two venues and show how they compete against each other, maybe provide discounts and offers and things like that, right? But that's how the model runs. Um, let's pause one second and then I'm gonna show you how the code actually works. So in order to read in a NetLogo extension, you have to start the model code with extensions and the name of the extension. And you saw this a little bit in uh, unit four where we went over how to build the viral marketing model, right? Uh, and so in this particular case, I'm gonna read in the um, GIS extension and the GIS extension is one of the ones that's built into the NetLogo package when you download it. Uh, and the first thing it does is call this a setup maps command and the setup maps command actually says load um, using the GIS command data set, load the shape files from a directory data slash roads that shape and track slash road that shape. And it's gonna put those into variables, right? And shape files, for those of you who have never played around with them before, are a GIS way of describing polygons, points, and lines, and how they, are, how they describe the space of the world, right? And so this describes the roads and the tracks, so you can see what's going on. The next thing we have to do is we actually have to, since the way GIS works is you have all this data about the whole world, but then you only want to kind of look at a particular point part of it, right? Because you don't actually want to look at the whole world when we're only studying Manhattan. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the world what's called the envelope or the space that we're wrapping around the world. And we're going to set that world envelope to the union of the roads data set and the, and the census tracts data set, right? So these have specified envelopes. They have special, so there's something that defines the outer limits of the roads and the outer limits of the census tracts. We're gonna take those and we're gonna use that to create the union of our entire system, right? Um, and create the envelope. And then we're gonna display the roads and display the tracks. And we essentially do those uh, by um, drawing setting the drawing color for GIS to red, set the roads display to true, which is an internal variable, and then just telling GIS to, just telling, the, telling NetLogo to draw it with a line thickness of one, right? Um, and what that does is actually draw the red lines that you see back here. And in fact, we can turn those off and on because of some of the way we specified that code, right? Um, now this is in the drawing layer, right? 
Uh, and so there are, um, there are fewer ways to interact with it, but I'll show you a couple of ways. So for instance, one thing we could do, uh, we display the tracks, right? We can also display the tracks and, and illustrate them as well. And we'll show you how to do the interaction in just a bit, right? So one of the things we do, and this is where we do the interaction, is we say for each of the tracks, ask the patches that are intersecting with that track to set their track ID in the patch to the GIS property STFID, which is this track F ID track value that is stored in the, in the tracks data set, right? So now that we've done that, now each patch knows which track it is attached to in uh, the GIS data set, right? And then we're gonna load the patch data. And when we load the patch data, we're gonna pull in the households file, which contains the population in terms of households for each of the tracks. Uh, and we do some kind of things to just read through that data. But the most important thing is that at that level, we first, we read in the household population. And then it turns out this geo ID2, which is the second thing on each line in this file, specifies the census track that that population is describing, right? And so we can ask the patches that have their track ID that matches that census track to set their population to read from the string the household population. Now, there's one small problem with that, which is um, there could be multiple patches in each, in each census track, right? So we don't want to have, we don't want to be multiple counting by having the population each of those. So the next lines deal with that. It says, ask the populations, uh, ask the patches that have population greater than zero, set their population to the population divided by the count of the patches which have the same track ID, essentially, right? So if I have two patches that are in that track because they have the same track ID, then I actually split the population between the two of them, right? And so now we've kind of, inter be using this GIS file intersection, we've actually intersected the, um, the um, sorry, we've intersected the, um, the, the drawing later in terms of the tracks with the actual patches, right? And it's this GIS intersecting that is determining that for us, right? Um, then after that, the rest of the code is pretty much standard agent-based modeling code. It's just gonna, you know, determine how far the consumers are from the, the, the venue and then make a decision about whether or not they're gonna buy based upon that, okay? So um, that's it for the GIS extension. In the next uh, talk, I'll talk about the networks.